Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Sarah Newman, and I'm so excited to show you these really cool steampunk-inspired supplies from our friends at Hunky Dory. This collection is called Clockwork Emporium, and as Hunky Dory says, it is steampunk fantasy. Now, for those who are already steampunk fans, this genre needs no explanation, but if you're new to it, let's get a closer look. We can start with the Luxury Topper Collection, and this is just one set from today's webisode. There's going to be a lot more for me to show you. This will give you a good idea of steampunk and what it means. So here we can take a look at some of these toppers. Now, the toppers are like card focals. These are all die cut elements. You can just pop them right out. You've got some images for the front of the card. For the inside, you've got borders and lots of accent pieces. But here you can see that steampunk style. Think of it as a Victorian era steam powered technology. Lots of cogs, gears. We've got some hot air balloons in here as well all with some softer touches like floral motifs and of course that beautiful gold foiling on here as well. Now this kit says it will make at least 16 cards but hunky dory packs are pretty packed and I'm sure that we can make more than that. Also included in this set we've got the printed cardstock sum of which is foiled so you can see the foiling down here at the bottom and these again just really rich colors beautiful imagery, and a lot of fun to use as well. Then one other thing that Hunky Dory also includes that I really appreciate is this sheet with project ideas. So this will give you a little bit of inspiration on how to use some of the elements in that set. Okay, now we have a lot more in today's collection as well, so let's take a look. We can also see the foiled craft cardstock. Now, I love this. Here you've got 16 sheets, lots of beautiful borders, also with that steampunk style. We've got some keys, cogs, gears, and one of my personal favorites, this all over kind of weathered scuffed design. I love this. And if you could feel it, it's actually really tactile as well too. So great for inspiration and for embellishing your cards. So there is the foiled craft card stock. Of course, because it is Anki Dory, we have Mattastic Adorable Scorable card stock. And here you've got 30 sheets and the color range is just outstanding. Really rich, really vibrant colors. Everything coordinates, of course, with our Clockwork Emporium set. But as you can see from the color palette here, these can be used for lots of different themes. Alrighty, there's still more. I have some printed parchment. Now there are 16 sheets in this set and you can see them down below. You've got some all over patterns and also some colored designs. Now I've just slipped a piece of that adorable scorable cardstock underneath here so that you can see that it is translucent. And that means that you can layer it beautifully but of course it's got that rich color on here, that beautiful vibrancy. Alrighty, there is still more. So let's take a look at the card inserts. Hunky Dory is well known for this as well. Now these are lighter weight paper and they're meant simply to be folded in half so that you can just nest the sheet inside your card and have something that perfectly coordinates. Now I will also say that I have been known to use Hunky Dory insert sheets for the outside of my card as well. So you've got some more design options with these too. Just really beautiful and fun designs. Alrighty, now there is still more, of course. We've also got the sentiment strip pad and this is a favorite of mine. So here you have 603 sentiment strips, easy to cut apart with scissors or of course a paper trimmer as well. You've got a couple of different colorways in here too. Now again, perfect for our Clockwork Emporium set, but also I think you can use these for lots of other themes too. So 603 sentiment strips in here. Alrighty, there is also the little book of Clockwork Emporium. Not so little, it's actually about an inch thick. Now, it's about four inches by six inches, which means that the images in here are perfect as card focals or for the inside of your card. You also have some cutout elements in here too. 
I love this one. That's really cool. So these are quick and easy to use. Some are going to be going vertically. Some will go horizontally. Lots of different options for you. And here again, you can see some of this really cool design style. A little bit futuristic, a little bit surreal. I really love it. In addition to all of our beautiful papers, we also have some dies too. So three different dies in today's webisode. We have the Cogs of Time, which is this one here. Big, beautiful cog assortment, and then also some sentiments here. Of course, Hunky Dory, really high quality dies, so you are going to get the best cut. There's also the Like Clockwork frame, which of course has that beautiful frame some more sentiments, and then one that I really, really love, the metal wings. So this butterfly is made up entirely of cogs and gears, which I really love. All right, so as you can see, we have a lot to explore today, and I'm really so glad you're here. Come play with us. Let's begin with this card, which combines almost everything from today's collection. And yet, while there's a lot going on, it still has a fairly clean and simple layout. Now, the card focal that you see here, these beautiful metallic foiled butterflies, well, this is from the Luxury Topper collection. So I've just simply popped that out and added it with a little bit of foam tape on there just for some extra dimension and then placed it in the center of this die cut frame. So the frame is from the Like Clockwork die set. So of course you've got this big beautiful frame. You also have a few extras and then some sentiments on here. Now this frame has a lot of detail to it, which of course we love, and it's going to give you this beautiful effect. I die cut it from this kind of a brushed gold uh, metallic foiled craft sheet and then simply, as you know, place it down onto the cardstock. Normally I like to trim out the, a slightly larger piece from the main sheet just to make it a little bit easier to run it through my die cutting machine. Secure it down with some low tack tape like this one from Hunky Dory and then run it through your die cutting machine and you will get an effect like this. So little hints of metallic shine on here and then of course that beautiful sturdiness of the craft cardstock. Now the other thing I have going on on my card front is some parchment layering. So I'll lift this up a little bit and I think you can see that this is a translucent patterned uh, parchment paper which is just beautiful and so much fun to work with. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to bring in I'll move my card aside and I'll bring in a little piece of this parchment and you can see it's a beautiful soft vintage brown with some vintage writing kind of overlapping on here. Now if I just simply place this down onto a piece of off-white cardstock and this is from the matte tastic cardstock set then it really lightens up that parchment effect. But there are lots of other combinations that you could use. So here I've got a piece of cardstock that is just slightly darker, so it's more of a butter yellow. And if I position this on here, I think you can see the difference between the yellow and that off-white. So it kind of depends on the look that you're going for, how much of that pattern you want to pop up and how much you want to sort of fade into the background. So you can, of course, combine this with lots of other colors too. So this beautiful, kind of a burgundy, soft mauve, and as you can see here, it's really highlighting some of the dark print on that parchment. So if we try this with a chocolate brown, as you can see, that's going to give you another effect there too. So lots of really fun combinations that you can create, just depending on which um, cardstock or paper you are layering this onto. Now, one question may be, how do you attach your parchment to your cardstock without double-sided tape tabs or anything kind of showing through there. And my trick is always a glue stick. And this is just kind of my go-to when I'm adhering parchment or vellum papers onto cardstock. So what I'll do is just gently apply a little bit of that stick glue. You don't need to apply too much on there, a little bit will do. I always apply it onto the paper that I'm layering my parchment onto because this is non-porous, but the cardstock is porous. So it gives uh, something for that glue stick to sort of soak into a little bit. And then simply place this on top 
and smooth it down and then let that glue stick dry and you are ready to go. So quite quick and easy to do and you don't need to worry about any glue showing through there. Okay, now one other thing that I want to point out about this card is that I've done a lot of inking around the edges and I've used the metallic gold pigment ink from Spectrum Noir throughout today's video because this just works so beautifully, especially in combination with those gold highlights on here. And the other thing I really like about this is that even though it is a pigment ink, it dries really quickly, even on non-porous surfaces like parchment. So it makes for a really nice kind of soft, gentle metallic edging on here. So that's the ink that I've been using throughout today's webisode. And then here you can see I've got one of those sentiment strips and I've just inked that with gold and popped it up with foam tape. Then for the card inside, I have some of that card insert paper, which I've trimmed down and glued on each panel. And one of the images from the little book of Clockwork Emporium is here. Got that mounted up onto some matte-tastic cardstock. Then on the other side is a metallic um, frame that I've just snipped in half. So I've trimmed that down also from the luxury set and then also this border on here too. And then I've got the sentiment strip and that's going to coordinate with the die cut sentiment. Now this is also from the Like Clockwork die set and you can mix and match your messages really nicely. And I really appreciate this about the sentiment strips collection because as you can say, see here, it's all geared up to celebrate. Well, that could be happy graduation. It could also be any of these sentiments on here. Um, there's dream big, be happy. So any of those would be fun. There's also, of course, happy birthday and new job, happy anniversary. And then, of course, you've got a variety of sentiments on here that will work as well, depending on who you're addressing your card to. So lots and lots of possibilities on here. And I really love the option of mixing and matching those sentiments so easily. And of course, getting a little bit of a mixed media effect on here. Super simple to do. Okay, so another card. Now this card is also using a variety of elements. The focal is from that little book of Clockwork Emporium, which I love so much. And because it takes up so much of the space on the card front, I don't need to do a whole lot else because this is really creating a lot of presence on here. So I've matted it onto some solid cardstock and then popped it up on foam tape. So again, I've got some more dimension on here. I've done some gold inking around the outside edge and that's gonna give some softness on here too. Then I've got some rose parchment paper in the background here and I've layered that onto some insert paper. So as I mentioned earlier, you can always use that insert paper for your card front as well. And so this is the rose parchment paper that I was using for this background. You can see how pretty that is just as an overall but then again, we can also look at how this goes onto this kind of butter yellow. You can see how that's going to pop out some elements. And then another favorite of mine is combining it with this navy blue. And take a look at how rich and textured that looks, just depending on how you have it layered. So lots and lots of different options with your parchment. And of course, these were just two of the sheets included in that set. So you've got lots to play with. Okay, now what else is going on on here? We've also got one of the luxury uh, toppers here, a little bit of ribbon as well. And then for the card inside, I've got some more insert paper, just trim that down so that I've got um, some on either side of the inside of my card more of those beautiful luxury foil toppers. I mean, you can really go to town with these. They coordinate so beautifully. And then some of them popped up onto some foam tape. Now in the background here, I've got another die. And this one is, of course, from the Cogs of Time centerpiece. So you've got this beautiful, large uh, sort of collage of cogs. And then you've got lots of little extras on here. And then as well, you've got a couple of sentiments too. Now you can use this piece as a one piece and you can see it creates a really nice focal element, 
but in this case I knew I wanted to have some of it kind of peeking out from behind here so I just grabbed a pair of scissors and snipped it apart and then was able to create kind of a framed effect on here and then I've got some more of those single elements over here too and this is all die cut from the matte tastic uh, cardstock collection so it die cuts really beautifully and gives you some nice coordination on here and some style and design okay now Another card that I want to show you is this one here that also has a die cut focal. Now this has a different technique going on. This is actually just some partial die cutting. So let me grab a few supplies and we'll take a look and see how this is done. When you die cut the metal wings butterfly, you'll get this gorgeous rich detail that you see on here. Well, I love this look and I wanted to create a three dimensional butterfly for the front of my card. So I die cut this twice, first to get that beautiful detail, as you can see here, and then a second time keeping all of the innies of the butterfly intact. Now, this is pretty simple to do. My trick for this is before you run this through your die cutting machine, you put on the back of your cardstock some of this low tack tape. So a little bit of the tape is going to add an extra layer of thickness to that cardstock. It also helps to hold in all of those little innies. Now, as you can see here, I did a pretty good job of keeping the most of them in. If I have a couple that do happen to pop out, well, that's okay. I'm not too terribly worried about any of the ones on the center because I know I'm going to cover up the center with this uh, topper embellishment. For the other areas here, those can usually just be popped right back into place. And then when I can place my other butterfly on top and I just secure it in the center, then I have my layered dimensional butterfly. So the trick there, keep that uh, tape on the back before you do your die cutting and then you will have a really nice dimensional effect with a little bit of extra on there. Okay, so for the rest of the card, now with my butterfly focal, I've angled this here on the card front, got one of the toppers here in the center, also accented with one of the sentiment strips. Now this has been inked with gold. I've also got this beautiful border here from the luxury topper collection, and then this background piece is also from the same set. I have this mounted up onto two different layers of that matte-tastic cardstock, so I've got that kind of butter yellow and then a gray covering my card front. And all I need for the rest of the card is just a little bit of ribbon on here. I have done quite a lot of inking around the outside edges, also with that metallic gold ink pad. Now for the card inside, I have some of that insert paper. I adore this image. I think that is just so pretty here. Then I've got one of the images from the little book of Clockwork Emporium, another foil topper, and a sentiment strip. And everything here has also been inked with the gold metallic ink pad. Okay, so I have one more card project to show you. Well, actually, it is not a card. It is a little mini folder. So let me move this out of the way and we can take a look here. Now, because Hunky Dory cardstock is so sturdy and folds so beautifully, it is just the perfect surface for a mini folder. So I'm going to pull open my bow here and we can see the inside. You saw those luxury toppers on the front and then on the inside there are two pockets with perfectly coordinating pieces that get just tucked inside as you can see here. So let me show you how this is put together. It, it could not be simpler. I'll grab some of these dies and we can take a look. So this is the base piece and this comes from the mini folder cutting dies collection. This is one that I use over and over again. So I've got my main piece, my main folder. You can see that here. Now this will not only cut around the outside, this center piece here will score in the middle, which makes it really nice for that um, foiled cardstock. And then I've also got these two pieces here. Well, these are going to be the pockets. Okay, so let me show you this. 
I've got my foiled cardstock here, and then all I need to do is just place this down, figure where I want to have that border showing, secure it down, again, with my indispensable tape here, run it through my die cutting machine. And as you can see, I will then have my piece that is not only perfectly cut, but then also scored in the center. So I just need to fold that up. Now I do recommend having a bone folder on hand for this. Just makes it a lot easier to get a nice crisp fold there. So then I've got my basis. Now I would also add that this would be perfect for a card front as well. So you can use this with or without the pockets. But then the pockets, as you can see, I've die cut two of these. And all I need to do then is simply use those score lines. Once again, they will be done for you. So you don't even need to worry about that. Fold these up and score. That Hunky Dory cardstock scores so beautifully. And then I can position this here and use some of that extra sticky tape. Apply that tape just to those folded tabs, of course, and that will give you a nice pocket. And then position it right to the edges there and you are ready to go. So you could do one pocket, you could do, of course, two pockets, you could have them going in different directions as well too. So if you wanted to have your pockets maybe facing, let's see, the long way, instead you could definitely do that too. So a couple of different options for you as well. Quick and easy to do. So let me bring back in my folded folder and we can take another look here. So I've got two pieces that I've just trimmed down just to go inside those pockets. And here I've used some of the toppers, a little bit of ribbon on here as well. Again, a little bit more of that beautiful foiled card, craft card stock, uh, one of the sentiment strips. Again, you can just do so much with this assortment because of course it all coordinates beautifully. And then for the outside of my pockets, I've got another one of the die cut sentiments and then another topper here as well. So this makes for a really nice, something special um, in terms of a card. And I would also say too, because these do give you a lot more surface area, this is a great idea for a card design for someone, if you're going to have a lot of signatures, uh, maybe for an office retirement or birthday or so on, would be really nice to have some extra space for lots of people to sign a handmade card. And then of course, all you need to do, fold it up, and tie up that bow and you have a beautiful presentation. Okay, so that is our final project for today. And I hope that you enjoyed the Clockwork Emporium as much as I did. I think I just had a blast with all of these beautiful supplies. Of course, everything perfectly coordinating to make it all really easy for you. Now, I have to tell you, I used a lot of cardstock toppers, images, and sentiments for today's project, and I still have a ton of supplies left over. And frankly, this is what you get with Hunky Dory. You get top quality materials plus outstanding value, and we just love that about Hunky Dory. So thank you to our friends at Hunky Dory, and a big thank you to you for joining me today. We're so very glad you're here, and we're really happy that you're part of the Paper Wishes family. Do feel free to leave a comment. We love to hear what you think. Each item can be purchased separately, and you can see them below. However, we've also bundled them into a creative money saver just for you. Be sure to see the money saver on the right side of your screen at paperwishes.com. And if you're watching us on YouTube, just have a look in the description box below this video. You'll find a link that will take you to our Paper Wishes webisodes page and you can see everything I just mentioned. If you enjoyed our video today, we really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps people to find our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. We create three to five videos each week, so there's always something fun to inspire your creative spirit.